We are about uh, 2,100 employees, 1,400 in Trondheim where we have a head office and about uh, 400 here and the other person spread around. Uh, we are a multidisciplinary organization and we work a lot with energy related uh, projects. We have been active in research related to hydrogen for more than 20 years and uh, we are a partner in the project uh, H2 Moves Scandinavia. Dr. Ole Bygner, he is the project manager for the project and I let him guide us through the program here indoors and also guide us until we are outdoors. The floor is yours. Yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for, for coming here this uh, early Monday morning. This is uh, the reason for that, of course, the Zero Conference, which will start at uh, 10 o'clock today. So we have limited time and we will try to fill it and squeeze as much information for you in here as possible. Uh, thank you, uh, Hans Christiansen, for the uh, introductory words. Uh, Sintef is our host for the fueling station, as you have seen. And uh, my name is Uli Bünger. I'm working for a small uh, company, consulting research company in southern Germany. Uh, I've been exposed to, to hydrogen and, and fuel cell activities for many, many years, about 20 years. And actually, I've been almost with uh, the first activities here in, in Norway from almost the very beginning, so a little bit more than, than 20 years ago. So, and that was then on the vision. And today, actually, we are looking into uh, commercialization. The uh, automobile manufacturers have told us that uh, by the year 2014 or 2015, round about then, commercialization of this technology should start, not only here in Norway, not only in Europe, but also in, in the world. Uh, so we are very happy that uh, Oslo, Norway, Scandinavia and Europe uh, are part of this game. And actually, it is not only uh, this small project, it is the widest scope of projects actually um, uh, which uh, well uh, uh, profit from 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 the funds coming from at, uh, from the European level and as well from from the Norwegian level. So uh, uh, when we started the activities uh, 20 years ago, uh, at actually Norskado was was heavily involved, and we talked about electrolysis. And we talked about the big scheme to take hydropower from Glomfjord into Germany, a project which then was dubbed NHEG, Norwegian Hydro Energy in Germany. So you see again the links, uh, the Norwegian uh, European links here. Um, what is the event about? Again, it is about the. Uh, ribbon cutting, the opening of the fueling station here in, in Göstad at, at Sintef facilities, but it is also about the rollout of the fuel cell vehicles. And uh, I will say a few words about the facts, the, the uh, hardware facts of the project in a minute. It is 19 vehicles which uh, will be seen then on Oslo and also two on, on Copenhagen roads uh, as of today. Um, so we, we have separated uh, this event into two parts. The inside part now here to give you, to fill in on some of the hardware facts and, and the, the information on the project itself. And outside then the ribbon cutting itself, the launch event, uh, specifically uh, welcoming some guests from the project, but also from, uh, well, uh, politicians, giving uh, and talking about the framework of the project and these activities. Um, First of all, this morning and after my talk of, uh, the, about the project, we will hear uh, words from Transnova, which is the Norwegian funding agency for these activities. Ifa Sulvi, uh, Sulvi will say a few words together with Björn Simonsen, who is heading the Hainur uh, project assembly. Let's put it like that. And afterwards, Gurl Andreasen from Zero will say a few words about the uh, somewhat wider scheme uh, going beyond the borders of Oslo and, and Norway in, in what she will say. So now, uh, about the project itself. Um, you have seen or realized that specifically for the press, we have prepared a couple of press maps containing information uh, on the fueling station, the different vehicles, and uh, also one sheet on uh, the project hard facts and data. 
And I have to apologize now. Of course, it was all on purpose. We wanted to test you if you actually read carefully what is in the paper then, uh, when, when you see that. It's, uh, there's two mistakes in it, <coughs> and one is concerning the number of vehicles. Again, it's very important. It's not 18 vehicles, it's 19 vehicles. And therefore, I think we have the right to say it's about 20 vehicles coming <laughs> to, uh, to Oslo. Uh, now, first about the, the partnership. Um, uh, on the vehicle side, we have uh, three companies participating. It's Daimler from, from Germany with the F-cell vehicle, uh, fuel cell vehicle, a sedan car uh, of newest type. We also have Hyundai Motor Europe as a partner, so the affiliate of uh, Hyundai Motor Corporation from Korea, which also brings uh, four vehicles. We had uh, a change of partners, I have to admit, in the project about halfway through, and we have one with Hyundai, uh, one uh, vehicle type into the project, also of latest design. So this is uh, very good news uh, for us all. Uh, we also have Sintef as partner, uh, Sintef offering the site and helping out with the operation of the fueling station. We have H2Logic, and by the way, uh, H2Logic is also providing the retrofit of the THINK electric vehicles to, to hydrogen fuel cell range extender operation. So this is in fact also the third uh, vehicle uh, provider into the project. And at the same time, H2Logic is also uh, providing the fueling station, a mobile refueling station for the EU road tour, which we are planning for uh, uh, next year, summer next year. Um, we have uh, Hydrogen Sweden as partner. Again, it's not only about Norway and Oslo, it is also about Scandinavia. Uh, so we would like to see the commercialization of these vehicles happening in a somewhat wider market uh, at Scandinavian level, and therefore uh, Hydrogen Sweden is pa uh, partnering up. The same is true for uh, Denmark, Hydrogen Link Denmark as Association, uh, which is specific, it's, it's very similar to the Hainur uh, project ad activities. It's about kind of a lobbying activity uh, for hydrogen and fuel cell vehicles in, in Denmark. Uh, then we have SP of Sweden, which is a research uh, uh, group, which is specifically looking into certification, safety issues of hydrogen and fuel cell, and of course other technologies. And they're doing a certification study uh, for this project, uh, act actually to accelerate uh, commercialization or help foster commercialization of uh, fuel cell vehicles and fueling stations throughout Scandinavia. So they are doing a study that we first have a learning effect and out of that derive recommendations how to improve that in the future, specifically accelerate the certification process. We have TÜV Süd uh, of Germany, from Germany, southern Germany participating. They're doing a safety concept uh, analysis and, and provisions so that we have a safe operation within the project uh, here. And finally, we have LBSD, which stands for Ludwig Bölko System Technology, which is uh, our own company uh, and is, uh, takes the coordination of this project. So, uh, how about uh, financing the project? Actually, it's uh, about 50% uh, provided by industry itself. Yeah? So that is a very vital sign that this is about commercialization and not only research. Then it's about 40% uh, funded by the European Commission through what we call the FCHJU, a public-private partnership, fuel cell and hydrogen joint undertaking, joint public-private undertaking, and uh, that is actually an activity where industry and the European Commission meet to specifically fund this type of activities. And we have, that is very important also for us and for the project, and without that it would not have come into being. It is national co-funding, both from Norway through Transnova and uh, from EUDP from Denmark. So this is a vital sign, this is in, in, in a joint interest, these activities here, and actually that were the, only, the, the early ideas uh, of funding this type of activity at European Commission level. The project duration itself is uh, three years, basically. So it started already beginning of last year. We had some, some uh, challenges uh, to face with partner changes and uh, financing because we are the pioneering lighthouse project, as we call it, in this program. And uh, uh, we have overcome that. And I'm happy again to stand here today and uh, look at the opening and, and rollout of vehicles. Uh, the project will continue until the end of next year. However, the vehicles will 
uh, stay longer, one or two years, that will be decided and discussed. But uh, officially, the funding part of the project will end end of uh, next year. Project targets, uh, to, get that to get that message very clear out here, is fourfold. Uh, it's, first of all, demonstrating the technology readiness, both of the fueling station as well as the vehicles and specifically maybe in a Nordic climate. That was the early idea. At that time when we uh, looked for the funds, we actually found that uh, Norway was providing the densest fueling station network and we took that chance and said, okay, it's also harsher climatic conditions as, as we are used to typically for driving the vehicles and therefore it's an ideal site for planning this project. So we also contribute to the uh, continuity of the Norwegian hydrogen and fuel cell strategy. This is uh, a very important word here. I will uh, come back to that. Continuity is uh, some, something which is needed. Uh, it has been ongoing for quite a while. We see other electric vehicles uh, coming up uh, in parallel to what we are doing here. Uh, and we would like to add one more, or we have added actually today one more fueling station to the already existing fueling station. There is one in Ökern in Oslo and, and some other places across Norway. We also would like to identify the certification conditions to accelerate the commercialization, as mentioned before, SP, which is uh, standing in for that, throughout Scandinavia. And finally, we would not only like to demonstrate and communicate that fuel cell vehicles are quiet, have similar user comfort as the vehicles we are used to operate today out there with gasoline and, and diesel combustion engines. Uh, but it's a quiet technology, it's an environmentally friendly technology. The cost should be in the same order uh, of the vehicles we drive today. But in the end, and maybe that's a very important other message, they are also fun to drive. They have a good acceleration, they are noiseless. So take the chance. Next weekend is a ride and drive event, so you all have a chance to, to ride the vehicles yourself. It's fun to drive. The project hardware, again, we have 19 vehicles, 10 Mercedes uh, B-Class F-Cell sedans uh, to be all operated in Oslo and Oslo area. We have two, four Hyundai vehicles in total. Uh, <coughs> they are of small SUV type, iX35 and two of them will be operated in Oslo and two further ones in, in Copenhagen. <clears throat> we have one 700 bar refueling station which you, which you will see outside and again ribbon cutting today. Uh, this is capable of uh, 700 bar hydrogen refueling. Uh, <coughs> it is of the latest design um, uh, well, uh, which has been agreed upon by, by industry. It is good for fast refueling, three minutes full fill uh, for, uh, for a full refill of, of hydrogen. It has a pre-cooling ability. Uh, it is good for 200 kilos hydrogen per day. One vehicle fills in about four to five kilos. Uh, it is uh, <coughs> 20 kilogram hydrogen per hour, five vehicles in a row uh, about that, and extendable if needed to 200 vehicles actually uh, per day. We also will see one 700 bar refueler, mobile refueler, as I talked be before, which then will accompany the European road tour of the fuel cell vehicles. Supporting activities, certification study, again and again, very important uh, for commercialization. Project performance monitoring and assessment is and, and recommendations, how to improve then performance specifically of the fueling stations. And project dissemination, not only do the good things, but also talk about, about them in the future. Uh, so there will be a two-week road tour next year. Uh, we are cooperating with Hainur, of course. Uh, and the uh, Scandinavian Hydrogen Highways Partnership. Uh, we also cooperate with something now which is very complicated, it's the European Regions and Municipality Partnership for Hydrogen and Electric uh, Vehicles or uh, Fuel Cell Vehicles. Uh, that about the hard facts of the project itself. Now, I have the great pleasure uh, to invite uh, two speakers onto the stage here. It is Eva Sulvi, the director of the Transnova Funding Agency and uh, uh, if I would say a few words first about Transnova to those of, of you who don't know that already and say a few words about hydrogen feeds into that program. And Björn Simonsen of Heinur. Uh, Björn is uh, in charge of managing the Heinur project, which is a Norwegian project on uh, building out hydrogen infrastructure and uh, also on the way to commercialization. 
please uh, come up here and say a few words about what is happening in Norway on hydrogen fuel cells demonstration. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Eva Solvi from Transnova. And uh, Transnova uh, was established in 2009 as a state funding organization. The main goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emission from transport. Transnova gives support to pilot and demonstration projects. We have focused on testing alternative fuels uh, as hydrogen, uh, biofuels and electricity. We also focus on reducing transport and stimulate to climate-friendly transport modes. H2Moves is one of the six hydrogen projects we support. And H2Moves is the greatest one. And uh, Transnova supported it project with 12 million Norwegian crowns uh, on a period of three years. Uh, and this project uh, as you heard, is a part of a greater uh, EU project. Transnova believes that hydrogen is a part of the solution, and it is important to get exp experience on how this technology functions. Uh, the great challenge when introducing a new technology as hydrogen in transport is to establish the whole value chain from energy sources to infrastructure, bringing the energy to the market, cars and also a system with um, services and supply uh, to the cars. And I think, and we think in Transnova, this, that this H2 Moves project is a project that focuses on the whole value chain and is therefore a very uh, good project to support. Uh, the experience from test site Oslo together with the experience from the other test sites will give us knowledge on how to succeed when we shall introduce hydrogen in a larger scale in some few years. Therefore, it is a pleasure to me to be here today uh, with the opening of this test site and I will wish the project H2 Moves Oslo good luck. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Uli. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, uh, reaffirming uh, your, um, your uh, work within hydrogen, uh, Eva. It's really reassuring to hear, and it's a pleasure to hear that this project is uh, of great importance, also in Transnova. So um, <coughs> I'll say a little bit about the Hynor project and uh, the constellation that led to this project and uh, the importance of that. Um, the Heiner project started out uh, eight years ago. Uh, when the project started, the focus was on creating a corridor, a uh, corridor going through the southern part of Norway from Stavanger to Oslo. And the point was to demonstrate uh, the technology, to demonstrate that hydrogen cars are here, you can refuel them in a safe way, and drive from one place to another with a decent range. Now, that was demonstrated uh, in, in uh, 2009. And uh, now we are uh, more focusing on uh, the next step. Uh, we have demonstrated that the technology works. It's safe to refuel. Now we want to prepare for uh, the market. We want something that is permanent. And uh, the way to do that is to build strong areas, clusters, or hydrogen hotspots where the technology can thrive and survive and grow. Uh, Oslo has uh, naturally become such a, a cluster. And uh, <coughs> with uh, the, the cooperation uh, between uh, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, formalized through the Scandinavian Hydrogen Highway Partnership, uh, this project uh, was uh, formed uh, on the basis of that cooperation. And um, 
I, uh, I think uh, I'm not uh, uh, understating it when I'm saying that this project, the H2 Moves project, plays a pivotal role in uh, the introduction of hydrogen, not only in Norway, but in the, in the Scandinavian countries, and maybe also in Europe. So uh, I, I think we, we can safely say that the eyes of, of, of Europe and maybe other places are fixed on Oslo today. So uh, I just want to congratulate uh, everyone here with this uh, station today. Thank you. So this was the, uh, the German formal handshake. Uh, that is, is, I believe, not very typical in Norway. <laughs> But I think uh, this is uh, such, such a good and, and positive opportunity we, we have today to be together uh, in, in this group. Uh, so I, I really like uh, to be here myself today. Now, finally, we have uh, not Einer Hondlück in which we had planned for today, but it was all too much. We know that the Zero Conference is, is uh, taking off today. And uh, of course, this takes a lot of time and, and uh, well, exposure as well. So Göril, uh, where are you? There are you. <laughs> <coughs> Gurel Andreasen from, from Zero. Uh, you had the same challenge, I guess, uh, this morning. You should be out there at the, at the airport, pr uh, probably, and also uh, prepare for, for the big conference and event happening. And I should stop talking, because <laughs> otherwise we are running out of time. Uh, Gurel, could you say, uh, tell us a few words about uh, Zero's perspective of hydrogen fuel cell technology, not only in, in the perspective of, of Norway, Oslo, Norway, but maybe in the wider uh, context of uh, Scandinavia and maybe also Europe and the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uli. And uh, I can't, can't think of any, any be other, other uh, better place to be to start the Zero Conference than uh, opening a hydrogen station. I, I wish that uh, <laughs> every day could start like this. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate everyone who has contributed to this hydrogen station. This is the fifth time that we open a hydrogen station here in Norway. And each time it's a great occasion for all of us who believe that in order to limit human-made climate change, we need to make it possible to drive a car without polluting. And hydrogen does that if it is produced from renewable energy, or fossil energy with, uh, CO where the CO2 is captured and stored. But the hydrogen cars are expensive right now. Uh, and that is how it is with all new technologies. And as more and more people start using it, the volumes will increase and the prices will drop. We need early markets. Markets with incentives, infrastructure, and the courage of early adopters. Norway is such an early market. We have the world's best incentive package for battery electric cars and for fuel cell cars. And it works. We see now that the number of electric cars uh, in Norway is uh, very high this year. And this has surprised and impressed us all. And this makes me very optimistic about what will happen when the hydrogen cars are introduced to the Norwegian market in a few years. Right now, these cars are not so known by the public. And that's why events like this is important. But also, Zero hosts the Zero Rally for climate-friendly cars. And this uh, rally, uh, next year, it will uh, uh, we will drive from Sundsvall in Sweden to Trondheim in Norway, along what we call the Green Highway. The rally is open for everyone, rally professionals, car producers, uh, politicians and enthusiasts. So I hope to see many of you there. And at this the, the reason why we have this rally is because we want to increase the interest uh, of the public in uh, uh, hydrogen cars and other zero emission cars. But nobody will buy a hydrogen car if there is no hydrogen stations. And that is why it's so wonderful to be here today when we open yet another hydrogen station. And that is what we have to do in the future as well. We have to keep the stations that we have 
and we have to increase and keep building new ones. That way, uh, we can uh, all drive our cars to work, to our cottage in the mountain, uh, and to the store without harming the environment. Thank you very much. So, uh, we hope uh, you, you get the, uh, well, the, the perspective, uh, the bigger picture. Uh, from Oslo out into the uh, into the world, uh, hopefully, and and from the world into into Oslo uh, and Scandinavia. Uh, now we have finished the first part of the program. The second part of the program is going to happen outside. Uh, as it is cold, I would like to ask you to to take your coats with you. Uh, you might have seen that next to the fueling station on the left hand side there is a small stage which has been erected. So the interviews with uh, our VIPs uh, are going to happen there and then finally also the ribbon cutting. So group yourselves maybe around there immediately. Maybe you grab something <laughs> to, to eat uh, from, 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 from the breakfast menu and then go out there directly. Uh, Ole Anders Sievertsen, who is known from TV, Norwegian TV, will moderate the session, guide you uh, through that. And um, also there will be a bus shuttle and uh, Rüter, who is next year bringing fuel cell and hydrogen buses here to the city, has offered and sponsored this bus, which will take whoever wants to go directly to Gardamu to the Zero Conference at about five minutes past nine o'clock. So now you may hear or listen to the interviews outside and afterwards see the inauguration. So I wish you a good day and uh, all those who go to the Zero Conference a very successful uh, event over there. So, have a good day. Bye-bye.